Okay, so we have this ideal gas law, okay? PV equals NRT. Famously, people um, call it PIVNERT. PV equals NRT. Um, and what I want to point out, um, when using this equation, um, most of the time, so I'll say most of the time, we're solving for moles, right? Because this is a chemistry class, right? And so when we start using um, this equation in problems, that's really what we want. We want to get the number of moles um, so that we can do a reaction stoichiometry calculation, right? But now that being said, we could still be solving for temperature, <laughs> volume or pressure so the gas constant is a constant so we're not really you know we, we use it but we don't ever really solve for it but recognize with this equation you know if you want number of moles right you have to have pressure volume and temperature if you want temperature you have to have moles volume and pressure and so forth right so you kind of have to think of all of the things that you have to be able to use this equation and what I want to point out, okay, as far as the units for this gas constant, I'm going to do a little bit of algebra here, and I'm going to divide both sides by N, um, excuse me, by NT, okay? And so when I do that, you know, that's R, PV divided by NT equals R. So then what about the units? Well, pressure, we're going to use atmospheres. Volume we're going to use liters. N for moles, we're going to use moles. And temperature, we're going to use Kelvin. Okay? So look at the unit right here. This is why I, I circled this value, the 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres divided by mole Kelvin. Okay? So that's where that unit comes from. And so we notice that there are other flavors, that is I like to call, the other flavors of R, um, and it's just involved in using different units in the PV equals NRT equation, okay? So these are the units that we prefer to use, okay? Atmospheres, liters, moles, and Kelvin. And then that way, when we use um, this equation, we're going to use the value 0.08206 for R, okay? So let's move forward. So from this equation, we generate um, what's called... STP, standard temperature and pressure. Um, and as it turns out, standard temperature is not room temperature. It's 273.15 Kelvin. That's uh, zero, I can't write. That's zero degrees Celsius, okay, for standard temperature. So I didn't make up the rules. It's just something we use. And the reason why we use standard temperature and pressure because it gives us a precise number for the molar volume of an ideal gas. Okay, so what is molar volume? Well, as it turns out, molar volume is V divided by N. It's the volume that a gas occupies divided by its number of moles. And as it turns out, at STP and only at STP, so at 273.15 Kelvin and one atmosphere, this value is 22.42 liters over moles. So where does this number come from? Well, we remember we have PV equals NRT. And if I do some algebra here to solve for V over N, okay, I'm going to divide um, both sides of this equation by N. Um, and also, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by P, okay? And so the P's cancel and the N's cancel. And what this gives me is V over N equals RT over P. So what happens when we use our standard conditions? Well, we note R is 0.08206. And look, this is liters times atmospheres divided by mole Kelvin. I want you to get used to putting units in your equations. I know it can be kind of a pain in the butt to do that, but it helps you see that the units cancel. My standard temperature, 
is 273.15 Kelvin. And my standard pressure is 1 ATM. So now look what happens to my units. Kelvin and Kelvin cancel, and atmosphere and atmosphere cancel, and what I'm left with is a liter divided by a mole. So now if I calculate that, 0 0.08206 times 273.15, and of course divided by 1, um, 22.41 something. So I said 22.42. I'm kind of cheating. I'm, I'm fudging the sig figs a little bit. Um, so we'll say 22.415. I'll add in one more sig fig to be super precise, okay? So what does that number mean? Well, that number I can use as a conversion factor, right? What that tells me is if I have one mole of gas and I'm at standard temperature and pressure, I know that one mole of gas is going to occupy 22.415 liters, all right? What if I have two moles of gas at STP? So let's actually write that down. Let's say, um, what if I have 0 0.567 liters of gas at STP? So I totally just pulled that number out of a hat, okay? Well, I could use the ideal gas law, right, to solve for those number of moles. However, if I know that it's at STP and I have 0.567 liters of that gas and I want to know how much of that gas would I have, look, I can do this like dimensional analysis. I can say 0.567 liters times, I know from this number, in, uh, excuse me, let me, um, I need to write it the other way. I need to flip it because let's maybe say I want to know how many moles I have, right? So in one mole, there's 22.415 liters. And, and look, I can use that number just like I would in my normal calculations. So I have this number in my calculator. I'm going to say uh, 1 over x, right? That flipped that number for me times 0.567. And so then, um, in reality, I would have like, you know, 0 0.0253 moles. So once again, I kind of just pulled that number. I just kind of randomly said, what if, what if I have 0.567 liters at STP? By saying it's at STP, then I know I can use this number directly. But if it's not at STP, okay, then I would be plugging in that 0.567 into V. I would have to know what the P and the T is as well. And then that would tell me how many moles of gas that I would have. Okay. So pay attention to this STP. It can make our problems much easier to calculate um, knowing that value. Okay. So here's a cool ca uh, calculation we can do with PV equals NRT. So bottles of compressed O2 carried by climbers ascending Mount Everest have an internal volume of 5.9 liters. So right away, I'm just going to start collecting all my stuff. Assume that one such bottle has been filled with O2 to a pressure of, so P equals 20, 25 PSI at, oh, look, T equals 25 degrees C. Also assume that O2 behaves as an ideal gas. We're going to talk in, in the next coming videos what that means for now we'll assume all of our gases are ideal and that ideal gas means I can use PV equals NRT and so now it says how many moles of O2 are in the bottle and then what is the mass in grams of O2 in the bottle okay well I can solve for N and I'm going to do some quick algebra here um, and I'll say that N equals PV divided by RT okay and that'll get me the answer but remember, my pressure, I have to make ATM. My volume is in liters, so that's all good. And my temperature, I have to make Kelvin. Okay, so let's do that. So if P equals 20, 25 PSI, I remember from my chart, let's take a scan back, that one atmosphere is 14.7 PSI. You don't have to memorize that, but... I've got it memorized at this point. 
Okay, so let's see, scanning through, good. So that says uh, f it was 14.7 PSI equals one ATM. Okay, so 2025 divided by 14.7, and that's 100, and let's see, with, I'm not gonna count the sig figs in my conversion, but I've got four sig figs here. So that's 137.8 atmospheres, that's a high pressure oxygen bottle, right? Whenever you have one of those kind of scuba tanks, don't just rip those things open. That's, that's a for real number. They've got about 2,000 pounds per square inch. It's like a missile when you open one of those things. Okay, that's why you need a regulator, one of those pressure regulators to keep you from, from making a missile. Okay, so temperature is 25 degrees C, but I gotta convert that to Kelvin. And I can just really easily say, right, plus 273, and that's gonna give me 298 Kelvin. And I've got my correct V, so now all I gotta do is plug and chug, okay? And so my number of moles in equals 137.8 ATM times my volume, 5.90 liters, you know, that's that's about that big, right? This is one of those backpacking tanks you see all those crazy mountain climbers wearing. Um, divided by R, so I'm going to use 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere, mole, Kelvin. I'm going to keep all those units because I just like to see that they all cancel. And then finally, T, um, at 298 Kelvin. Now definitely that bottle is no longer 298 Kelvin on the top of Mount Everest, but if it was at 298 Kelvin when it was filled, that's going to determine how much gas was in that bottle, right? Because it got filled up at 298 Kelvin, closed up, and then it got taken up to the mountain, okay? So now I can see that my Kelvin and my Kelvin unit's gonna cancel my atmosphere and atmosphere, liter and liter. And look, the way this works, um, this becomes one over one over moles. So that is gonna give me a mole. So I'll write that down. That unit becomes one divided by one divided by moles, which gives me a mole, okay? So now um, I'm gonna keep this number in my calculator, because why not, okay? Um, that'll be more accurate. Oops, I said plus sign, plus zero equals, okay. So now times 5.90 and then divided by 0 0.08206 and then divided by 298 equals. And uh, that's quite a bit. We need quite a bit of oxygen up there on Mount Everest. So 33 um, and the volume is gonna give me um, Three sig figs, same with the temperature, three sig figs. So 33.2 moles of O2. All right, and we know one mole of O2 is 32.00 grams. Okay, so I'll leave that number in my calculator and say times 32. And yeah, it's like a kilogram, right? A thousand. 63, that's a kilo of oxygen you're carrying around with you. So 33.2 moles or with three sig figs, um, I'm gonna write that as 1.06. So look, this is 1,063 grams. And you can see right away how I recognize that was a kilo. Technically it's 1.06 kilos, okay? You know, and that's like two, 2.3 pounds or so of gas. So it's quite a bit. That's why it's under such a high pressure. 